Hello and welcome to Unsurf Swell. My name is Elvis and as always, I'm your host. Alright, so there's going to be quite a bit of news to talk about, not that much to review, and of course the new episode of WandaVision. So let's kind of get through this. First off, we have the announcement that DC and WB are moving ahead with the pre-production and planning of a Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes movie uh, directed by Angel Manuel Soto, who apparently was a director or creative force behind this show called Charm City Kings that I've never seen. Uh, but that's great. I think that's that's really awesome. After all this talk about, you know, um, America Chavez and the Latina actress playing Supergirl, I'm like, that's cool and all, but I want to see Latins playing Latins. And so that the fact that they're making a Jaime Reyes movie, uh, that's incredible. Um, on the short list, apparently, on everyone's mind, is the main character, the main kid character from uh, Netflix's Cobra Kai, Zolo Mariduena. And I think that's a great choice. I hope that he gets in. He's so charismatic and fun on that show. I think he'd be able to pull it off incredibly well. Uh, so fingers crossed. And also, they should totally rip off Into the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse is like a perfect Blue Beetle movie. You know, if Miles Morales was Jaime Reyes and old Peter was uh, Ted Cord, just rip it off wholesale. I wouldn't mind. Anyways, and speaking of Spider-Man, our next piece of new topic is that we do have the first title announcement for Spider-Man 3 called Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm glad this trilogy is almost over, so I don't have to think about this again, you know what? Because it's um, it's a really bad movie series, and I really don't like it, so fingers crossed that this one shocks me, or I can just forget about it. And now we have a bevy of Snyder Cut news, the first of which is that we have these trio of Justice League variant covers to start the Pendus run that tie in to the Snyder Cut movie, um, being, you know... Uh, Showing the characters from the Snyder Cut, like Black Superman, Steppenwolf's new design, Dark Side, all that kind of stuff. But the third, I believe Jim Lee one, has something weird on it. And it is that it shows Martian Manhunter. Now, there's some debate going on as to whether or not this is actually Martian Manhunter from the movie. Um, it does have a weirdly close um, resemblance to the actor playing Martian Manhunter in the movie that we know of who was in the first two Snyder movies as well. But the cover as a whole looks a little bit cartoony, so it's up in the air. It would be pretty funny if our first look at this Martian Hunter was on a variant cover for a series that hopefully no one will read because Bendis sucks. And our next point is that we have the official release of the trailer score for the Snyder Cut uh, from Junky XL. The track is called The Crew at War Power, and it sounds incredibly awesome. It sounds amazing. I don't know where it's going to be included in the movie, but it does seem pretty triumphant, but also pretty dangerous. It's got some varied tones in there that I really enjoy. And our last piece of news is that Vanity Fair came out with this um, retrospective kind of article about the rise of the Snyder Cut. One thing about it is that it really kind of gets in the nitty gritty about what execs and uh, what are people felt about both cuts and like the entire chaos behind the production in a really kind of interesting and engaging way. Uh, but the main point I want to talk about is that it had some of Snyder's original ideas for Justice League, including something like how Batman would fall in love with Lois Lane, and it sounded really soap opery. So I'm glad she like that got cut. You know what? So. Uh, that's it for news topics. Uh, let's move on to what I read this week. First off, we have New Mutants number 16. And this is still a solid as hell book. I mean, it's hard to really parse it out as anything other than that. It's good, and it's paced really well despite all the stuff it has going on um, that it has to you know, touch on and really kind of finagle with. It's a loaded cast, and the amount of plot threads are growing by the second. And yet, it's still able to really feel coherent and satisfying rather than being a disjointed or uneven mess. I'm able to feel and to sympathize with Rain, as well as be affected by the terror of the Shadow King's manipulation of the child mutants without missing a beat. And with how much it cycles through it on like a monthly basis, that's a harder task than it looks. So, you know, kudos. I'm still relentlessly engaged with how much is being set up here on both an intimate character level, but also a story and narrative level. It's the same old one-two punch that you need to calve and land and um, that's why I keep trying to emphasize with team books I review. So overall, it's another really entertaining and impactful issue. And I can't wait for next month, which is always a good feeling. Overall, thumbs up. Next up, we have X-Men number 18, uh, where we finally have the vault opening. Um, well, not really. Not yet. It's a bit of a misdirect, but it's a good one. Instead, we get a get caught up to speed issue. 
to find out what happened during the vault team's first few minutes in the vault. And um, it's a complete shit show. A completely hilarious and horrifying shit show. Um, in a tradition that only Hickman can truly pull off. And in that sense, it's a bit of a compressed issue as well. It's been like a year or so since this plot was like seeded out. And well, people were expecting a bit more. But it does do a good job at selling the moment. It's one of those issues that knows how to handle the compression where it's being used, even accidentally, to give a certain beat all the time and space it needs to land, which is great. I kind of wish there was more to it. The hub book aspects of X-Men have always irked me in this run, but this was still entertaining, and it really opens up this plot thread strong. Uh, so one thumb up, one thumb middle. And lastly, we have Superman vs. Imperius Lex number 2, and this was a pretty decent second issue and a good follow-up. I did have my problems with the first issue, and a few of those do carry over into this, where there's maybe a bit too much focus on the blunt, fourth wall breaking, speechifying message, but to a lesser degree. It's not as much of an issue this time, as this issue definitely has the characters take more of the helm and the lead, which is a good thing because these dynamics, uh, personalities, and little jabs back and forth have always been Russell's forte, and it's no different with this. The way he's able to write an older, more jaded, but still keen-minded Lois is wonderful, and all three of the leads bounce off each other with, you know, wit and verisimilitude. It's still not as good as Russell's best, but it's far away from his worst, and it has more bite and charm than them either. And that's good enough for me to stick around and see if the final stretch, you know, can land this. Fingers crossed. Overall, one thumb up, one thumb middle. And we can move on to what I watched this week, um, which is WandaVision number 8, maybe number 7, I don't know, I can't keep track. Because this show has gone down the fucking drain. The last episode was one of the worst yet. And this episode was trying hard to take that crown. It's tedious. It's meandering. It's lying like crazy to the audience. And that's about it. It's trying too hard to be something more. But instead of all the effort going toward actually writing something clever or unique. It's going into its superficiality. It's gimmicks. Rather than the storytelling. So we get some insanely blunt and substantial dialogue that is meant to mean more like on a character basis or a story basis. But it's in fact doesn't relate anything personal, emotional, or engaging. It's a flat line of a show. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it two thumbs down. This show is so dead. It's a void. It's a void of anything. Um, people went insane over like a Munster's tribute theme that appears in this episode and like is that it that's the only thing you really care about i mean you're not really talking about anything on like a character level i know people have said like wanda's experience in this episode kind of reminded them of their own depressive states and i don't want to like i don't want to make little of that because that sounds like it was really impactful to the individual viewer like that and i think that's wonderful but it takes up like four minutes of the episode so instead of the show actually focusing on that and actually you know, making a point it kind of cycles through really bad cliches and story beats and fun gimmicks. So that's why I hate about the show. Instead of doing something interesting, which it can, and most people see that it can, it does nothing. So yeah, two thumbs down. Anyway, that's it for this week. I do have an announcement, which which is that I'm releasing in about two days, a special bonus episode of Unsource Wall that I did with a very special collaborator, uh, which is going to be an hour and a half long uh, retrospective on the Zack Snyder DCU movies so I can't wait to release that and you know we're gonna really get into it so maybe be a lot of fun so see you then have a great week thank you so much to the cover artist for the show at DOTEMCE please check them out they're amazing and yeah have a good one see you next time